Aliens did for action films what Alien did for horror, and it was one of those rare instances where the sequel not only matched the original, but some would argue exceeded it, which is why expectations for Alien 3 were insanely high. Despite David Fincher becoming one of our great filmmakers following his directorial debut with Alien 3, the film unfortunately failed to meet the standards set by its predecessors. The decision to kill off beloved characters Hicks and Newt at the start of the film not only angered fans, but left them disappointed, which was only only amplified by the film's lack of action and its overall dark and bleak tone. After killing Ripley off, in this viewer's opinion, one of the highlights of the film, audiences thought that would be the last we'd see of her. They'd be wrong. After realizing Ripley was every bit as important to an alien film as Schwarzenegger is to a Terminator film, the studio brought her back from the dead in a bonkers fourth installment called Alien Resurrection, which would see her cloned and finally return to Earth to set up a fifth film that would pit the aliens against humanity with a final battle for Earth itself. When Weaver expressed her dislike for this concept, the idea was scrapped, as multiple attempts would follow by various writers and directors to bring a fifth film to the big screen, which we'd eventually get in the form of a prequel with Prometheus. But that film was almost very different too. So let's take a look back at what could have been Alien 5. After being disappointed by the last two Alien films, Weaver expressed interest in returning for a fifth film only if Ridley Scott or James Cameron were involved. Luckily for her, both men expressed interest in returning, and it wasn't long before Cameron began writing a script with an unknown writer for Ridley Scott to direct. Looking to do something similar in tone to Aliens, Cameron also explored including Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film to pair with Ripley. Before he could finish the script though, he learned the studio wanted to fast track a different, already completed script for a crossover film that would pit the aliens against the predators. Cameron, feeling this was a tacky gimmick no different than Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, ceased work on his concept altogether, stating that Alien vs Predator would kill the validity of the franchise. Ironically, after seeing the movie, Cameron changed his tune and ended up really liking it, calling it the third best alien film in the franchise. Now, I understand the Alien vs Predator concept was finished and ready to go, and Fox needed a blockbuster for their summer schedule but we're talking about a Ridley Scott-directed alien film with James Cameron writing and producing that would have starred Ripley and potentially Arnold Schwarzenegger. You don't go ahead with another script, you wait for James Cameron to finish his. I honestly may never get over this. Following the poor reception to the second Alien vs. Predators film, Neil Blomkamp, hot off the success of District 9, pitched an idea for Alien 5 called Alien Awakening. As the title suggests, this film would have ignored the events of Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection and been a a direct sequel to Aliens, opening with Ripley, Hicks, and Newt coming out of stasis. Even though I like Alien 3 and I love Fincher as a director, I just wanted a version of, of the continuation of what happened after Aliens. And for Newt to be alive and for, you know, for Ripley to continue that story. Um, and it's, it was sort of based on that idea. While no script has ever leaked, significant concept art has, and from that we have a pretty good idea of what this film would have been like. Most of it would have taken place in two key locations, the enormous Wayland yutani Tower and an offshore facility known as Anchor. It's clear that the Wayland yutani Corp has got their hands on the derelict ship from the first film, or a similar one, and are reverse engineering the aliens. They conduct experiments, create their own variations, and weaponize the unique physiology of the creatures, as exemplified by Hicks' gun. Another intriguing addition is the Trematode, a serpent-like organism that burrows into the body using acidic saliva. Once inside, it deposits multiple facehuggers, maximizing the potential for a single Trematode to spawn and develop an entire xenomorph hive, unlike the traditional method of alien reproduction via the laying of facehugger eggs. As with any alien film, there are androids here too, and one of them looks eerily similar to Hugh Jackman, whether that's a coincidence or if he was actually in line to play the role. It's apparent that at some point in the film, either this operation goes horribly awry and or Ripley and Hicks decide to take it all down, recognizing its potential for disaster. In a nice callback to this iconic moment from Aliens, Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> Ripley dons an alien exoskeleton suit, which I assume was designed and developed by the Wayland yutani Corp as she goes one-on-one -on -one with the Queen. A 
someone who is deeply disappointed by both Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, this film seems like it would have been closer in tone to the original two films, while being a logical continuation of the story. As Blomkamp was developing this film, Ridley Scott was developing his own prequel film, which would get to cinemas well before Blomkamp's. Ridley was drawn to the idea of going back to where the alien creatures were first found and explaining how they were created. The first draft of the script he had written was called Alien Engineers, and although it was similar to what we'd end up with in Prometheus, this early version was a direct prequel to Alien, taking place on the same moon and setting up the events that occur in the original movie. The xenomorphs are here too, and David discovers that they're not naturally occurring life forms, but rather biologically engineered weapons of war, created and modified by the engineers. David goes on to imply that there are other variations of xenomorphs designed for specific purposes. He also learns that the engineer's ship was headed to Earth, with plans to wipe out humanity using the xenomorphs. However, the creatures got loose and wiped out most of the engineers before they could carry out their mission, which David tries to complete. This is the inherent challenge with prequels. They risk unraveling the mysterious allure of a cinematic universe. A significant aspect of the Alien film's mystique has always been the unsettling notion that our vast galaxy harbors countless unknown dangers. However, to then go and reveal that the xenomorphs are mere products of bioengineering shatters that very mystique, stripping away the unknown and diminishing the impact they once had. This version of the script would have ended with the engineer ship transmitting a distress call into space, which the crew in the first Alien film eventually respond to. Before going into production on this, Ridley shared the script with writer Damon Lindelof to get his feedback. While Lindelof liked the story, he disliked that it was a direct prequel. As he'd go on to say, if the ending to Prometheus is just going to be the room that John Hurt walks into that's full of eggs and alien, there's nothing interesting in that because we know where it's going to end. It really happened when we were in the very home stretch. Like, we think we're ready to go. Um, and the studio had two thoughts. They were like, let's dial back the alien monsters and lean more on the engineers, and let's get a known writer on this and bring it home. Uh, which, of course, I didn't love, but which, as an unproduced writer at that time, I had been told to expect from the very beginning, so I wasn't that surprised. Um, and they talked to a number of writers, and Damon was the guy who got it, in their view, and really seemed to love the story for what it was, to understand its soul, and to be happy to carry forward uh, in the spirit of what had been done so far. Lindelof would proceed to rewrite the script into what we know as Prometheus. However, I think Ridley would have been better served making a standalone sci-fi film that explored the origins of humanity and the meaning of life. I know. Instead of trying to tie it into the alien universe, I would have loved to have seen that film and I think it would have been much better received too. Even James Cameron came out and expressed admiration for Prometheus as a compelling science fiction movie, but noted its logical inconsistencies. Ridley also cut a lot out of the script and left scenes on the cutting room floor, which would have added more context to the engineers' plans. For example, after seeding Earth with humans, the engineers watched as we went to war and embraced greed and violence. So they sent a human-engineer hybrid or something in the form of Jesus Christ in an effort to guide humanity down a more enlightened path. But we just ended up killing him. That's when the engineers realized that humans will never change and made plans to exterminate us. This is interesting stuff to explore, and it's all the more puzzling why Scott didn't just make a standalone sci-fi flick, since his original plan for the film's sequel, Alien Covenant, was not to include the xenomorphs at all, and make David the new villain. After fan backlash to Prometheus, though, he changed his tune, and rewrote the script to have David create the xenomorphs, ultimately spoiled Spoiling their allure and making the universe just feel much smaller. After Alien Covenant underperformed at the box office, Neil Blomkamp's Alien film was unfortunately cancelled, although he suspects the underperformance of his own film Chappie had something to do with it. I do think that the way that Chappie was received probably p played a role in me not working on Alien. Over the years, the Alien franchise has witnessed its fair share of missed opportunities. The, the thing that I, I would have really enjoyed about it was Sigourney Weaver was really down for what I'd written. The future of the Alien franchise still holds some promise, as evidenced by the upcoming film Alien Romulus, helmed by Fede Alvarez, director of Evil Dead 2013, with Ridley Scott on board as a producer. Hopefully it's able to rekindle the gripping thrills and iconic horror that made the first two films celebrated parts of science fiction cinema. Thanks for watching everybody, and don't forget to like and subscribe.